So today, um, we, on this uh, Creative Living series, we're going to talk about something that we often hear Dr. Greg or some of us also say it. What are we approaching the ocean of life with? And um, I want us to, I want to give my little thoughts about this um, statement and um, after it all we'll discuss and um, I want to also know how you are approaching the ocean of life, how you are approaching life and its um, um, occurrences, from what perspective are we viewing life. We'll also talk about how we can be mindful to embrace life, knowing that life unfolds perfectly. And we know as true students, we are truth students, that's what we gather each time here to learn um, the truth, the principles. We know that the universe is constantly expanding and unfolding within all of us and causing us to grow. We also um, each time know that we are not meant to be stagnant. We are seeds sown and we have to grow. And which direction are we growing towards? So when we ask what are we approaching the ocean of life with, it suggests that we have already done some inner work ourselves. It suggests that many of us now know that life responds to what we expect. Life will always respond to what you give it. We know that already from this teaching. And um, a little bit about um, our mission statement here. One very fundamental thing on this statement is that we are here to transform lives for empowered living. And we want to see life always from a connected and empowered viewpoint. We're not just here to live lives and just flow with the tide. We know what we want and we want to live it from an emp empowered state of being, from an empowered viewpoint, from a connected view, from a connected perspective. We are far from destitutes and alone in this world. No, 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 no. We have power at our disposal at all times. We say this a number of times. Everything that we do, we want to approach it from a connected point of view, a connected perspective, because we know we are one with the divine. We are the spark of divine. And as we go within, I remember that the Spirit and I, the Father and all of us, we are one. We are one. And part what we are always trying to understand is to get this concept. We are one with Spirit. And when we do this, we are raising our consciousness and we approach life from a position of knowing, very important, from a position of understanding, from a position of knowing who you are and what you have come here to be. That is very instrumental. And when we have come to express life from this position, we do it enthusiastically, vibrantly, and successfully because it's a position of strength, it's from a connected position. It's from an empowered viewpoint. And we often know that we are not just here to affirm this. Affirmation, again, it's good. It would take our deeply knowing these principles before we can demonstrate the life that we have come to experience. I'll read this again, I'll go through this again. It will take our deeply knowing these truths 
not just to say it from the lips, you say it until you feel it. You have to deeply know these principles that it becomes part of, it becomes who you are so that we can demonstrate it in our lives. It becomes our experience. We wake and sleep in that experience because we are engulfed within it. We are swimming it in this truth. Many of us, we know we are actively engaged in doing this work. It's a work we often say that we do. We hear you and we hear the demonstrations the, um, when we do our interactions on the result of practicing this teaching. And we know that all these demonstrations, it can only come from practices, this raised consciousness. We also know, again, where each time our lessons, that our predominant thoughts influence our mindset and the actions that we think thereafter. Whatever we see, whatever we hear, whatever we constantly brood upon affect the outcome of the our outcome. You can think of your mentality, your predominant thoughts and beliefs as your consciousness, and your consciousness is always at play in your life. Simply said, it's an input and output. Whatever you feel your mind is, comes out as the output. According to Buddha, who said, we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Very important, our thoughts. He also said, our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. And what do we think are also, what we think is also affected by what we constantly hear, what we constantly see, what we constantly um, have around us, our environment. Ralph Emerson also said, you are what you think all day. We, in this place, we also say it in so many ways. You become what you think most of the time. It's just a simple science or ideology because that fills you and becomes your subconscious and you act from that position. Reverend Greg always says, pay attention to the tendencies of your thoughts. This you always hear us on Sunday, he mentioned, uh, sorry, on Thursday, from our classes, we know that our thoughts are powerful and creative. Negative and critical thinking will work against you. We want to identify them and find ways to release them. Like I said earlier, it's input and it's outputs. If you're filled with negative and critical thinking, it will create negative and critical outcomes too. Again, one other very important thing that we also know about thoughts is that thoughts, thoughts are things and they can be changed. They can be changed now because we have the power to redirect our thoughts. We talked about um, some practical ways people change their thoughts. Some speak it aloud, nest, some say get away. You just find them trying to resist the flow of um, some negative thoughts within them. Some put things to watch or listen to music or meditation to change that thoughts process to create something that's life. And we know our thoughts are tangible as to what's written on paper. Because everything we do emanates from there. Life and its occurrences that emanate from our thoughts. Everything we can see, hold, touch, use, read, all started from our thoughts. 
Little wonder this is always stressed in this teaching because we are powerful beings and we create from the position of our thoughts, our predominant thoughts. And again, and so if you can think it, it can be. That's a universal statement, universal law. If you can think it, it can be. So whatever you think, positive, it can be. In fact, once you have a thought, it's starting to demonstrate. So every process starts with a thought. All that is left is experiencing it in the physical. That's a totally different lesson, what we do while we are waiting for the result of what we are um, bit trusting the universe for. So I can basically say that thoughts are seeds. So if you have a good thought, it's a good seed. From our textbook, it is said that our thoughts, if left alone, would bear fruit. So whatever your thoughts are now, if you nurture it, it will bear fruit. And through this teaching, we know that thoughts are things, and those things we can change if they are not life-given. It's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. We have the power to do that. Likewise, the universe acts upon our affirmative prayers, and they would demonstrate like the plant testes if we nurture them and maintain positive expectancy. These are very, very fundamental things to life itself. Anything we nurture grows, and if we maintain positive expectancy, they're like watering our thoughts, they're like providing plants with manure to grow. They eventually, Again, those thoughts become the lenses through which we view and make senses of things around us. I'm just taking us through a process of understanding our thoughts, how they are seeds, and how they can influence the totality of our being and our art on the outcome. There's um, a quote Dr. Greg often um, mentions from the book by Chuck C, who said, sometimes we need to put on a new pair of glasses. In fact, that was the title of the name of the book. Everything starts with what you are thinking, and it influences your perception, like seeing a glass as half full. So we moved from thoughts as seeds now to nurturing it, and it's affecting perception with which you view things. So if my predominant thought is negative, I would always view every situation from that viewpoint, standpoint, because I have a predominant negative thought. And if my predominant thought is positive, everything that comes that come by, by me, I will see it from that viewpoint of positivity. Even if, if everything is dark around me, I would always see something positive in it. Because my thoughts, my subconscious thoughts, my predominant thoughts are positive. So, if we put on a new pair of glasses, so to speak, where you see the cup as full, then there are endless possibilities. I don't have to stress this. Perception. And physically, when we look, see things from that viewpoint with the new glasses, which is all what we are trying to talk about in this teaching, 
have that viewpoint of possibility, that viewpoint of positivity, that viewpoint of I can do all things. Once we have that viewpoint, the problem is solved because we see everything from the perception of good, only good, of God moving higher from good to greater good. Everything, everything, not some things, not a few things, everything is renewed. Everything is changed. Once we can have that predominant viewpoint from that new glasses, seeing things as good, always. For example, if the belief from, from your partner, when you break up with your partner, in instance, is that I am not attractive. I mean, you broke up from a partner example. I'm just citing an example. I'm not attractive. And you go somewhere else, say you go to a party, and 10 people tell you that you look great. And one person says to you, your outfit is not interesting. You are likely to go home and fixate on that particular one that it's not interesting or doesn't look good because the predominant mindset is negative. Meanwhile, 10 other people told you, oh, you look good. You might think other thoughts, what not, you will always think thoughts consi consistent with what you believe, such as, why do I always pick the wrong thing to wear? I have no style. Other people dress so much better than me and then you say, I'm not attractive. Meanwhile, 10 other people told you something good, but you chose to dwell on the negative one that you are not attractive. And this is so because your predominant thought is negative. And what happens is that we the only took in the evidence from the environment that was consistent with what the thought pattern is. And these are not things we consciously do, it happens subconsciously. Because that thought pervades your whole being and you're ruled and directed by those thoughts. And that is why on, again, I, I talk about the Thursday class, Dr. Greg would always ask us, what has it been like being you this week? And fundamentally, he's wanting us to be more aware of our thoughts. And he's always telling us how powerful they are. Everything we say about life emanates from there, our thoughts. If we are able to nip any of the bad thoughts on time, we affect the, uh, the results that we see. We are, you know, mo to monitor the tendencies of our thoughts. And another very instrumental thing, important thing about this teaching is that no one can do it for you. You would do the work for yourself. I would do my own work myself. Because we are knowing there's nothing outside of us. Everything we need for life, we have within us. We have the fullness of power within us would do the work of going within, activate it, and use it for our own good. So if we pay attention, you will quickly get good at spotting when you go negative and positive. We all often talk about the pause that refreshes. When you practice any particular thing, you become sensitive, you know when you begin to drift. You, are, you, be, you know 
when every thought is not leading to making you who you have come here to be. And we have that power to nip it in the bud. And if it's life-giving, then we can empower it. Like he said, we nurture it. So when stuff happens, as it will always, life will always bring us issues, challenges. When life throws a curveball towards us, through an understanding of this teaching, we can see these occurrences from a higher place, from a position of good and only good. It takes time, it takes process, it takes consistency. You just keep practicing it. We talked about in this lesson that when challenges or things happen, we do not call it failures. We call it experiments because we learn from every experience. The experiments. So many scientists try the processes so many times, so many, so many times, until they got something positive. And we are coming from that point of knowing that it's okay. It is okay. It's perfect. It's unfolding perfectly. Everything is dovetailed to make you come to an expected end. Everything is in divine order. It's working out. When we say working out, doesn't mean it, it's magic. It is working out. It takes time, process, consistency, focusing on the good always. It is working out for your own good. This is the practice. Or some of us, we say the practice of, the, the, we say the higher calling of the practitioner. We are all practitioners. We keep practicing. We, it's a process. We are all in the process. We are unfolding perfectly in divine order. You do your work. I do my work. No one can do it for you. No one can do it for me. I have to do it. I have to go through the process. And when we do this, we are developing self-mastery. You are becoming, I am becoming self-aware. I am becoming stronger. You are becoming stronger and powerful. You are not a victim. I am not a victim. You are truly understanding it's all happening for you and not to you. It is happening for you, for your own good. It's not happening to you. And when this happens, you, me, we are no longer that person who wastes much time talking about what's fair what's not fair no 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 we are not wishing and hoping everything will change no way we are not into wishes things are changing because of you and your consciousness you don't wish things away you don't wish things to happen we treat affirmatively, we declare in the now, because you are developing a deep knowing. You know that you know you are one with this divine. You are one with everything good. You are one with it. And not just you're one with it, you live, you move, and you have your being in it. Everything, the totality of you, you who you are, is in it. And that's just a very strong standpoint, standpoint of faith. And what is faith? You call those things that be not as though they were. So we don't say, I will, I am. I am the fullness of divine. I am whole, I am complete, I am supplied and supported, not I will be supplied and supported, I am, this is who I am, I live in it, I move in it, 
I have my brain in it, is from a position of conviction that all is well. It's a position of power. It's a position of understanding that you, me, we are co-creators. And we have come here to be, it's a self-realized man or woman that we are, knowing that we, you, are one with life, with God, with source. You don't understand this, this, what this is. You are one with life, you are one with God, you are one with source. You are one with that creative intelligence. And not just that we are one, everything it responds to us, it responds to what you're thinking, it responds to what you present to it. Always. And when we come from this standpoint, we also know we are unfolding perfectly. So when the mist what we call mistakes, or happenstances occur, we know it is working for our own good, not to destroy us. It's a process. We're unfolding perfectly. And again, it's, I ask again, are you approaching life from a mindset of abundance or lack? How do you see things? How do you approach your day-to-day -day activities? Is it from a standpoint of I'm supplied and supported? Our work, everything we do is to find beauty in every occurrence. It's there. find beauty in every occurrence. Our, our work is to see good and approach life from that positive mindset. Nobody promised that it will be easy, but it's the work we do. And also know that we can also connect with this power that we have within when we unite with it, we have a victorious outcome. And one very constant thing is that once we always see things from this viewpoint, from these new lenses, you know what? everything starts to change. Everything, not some things, everything starts to change to work in our favor. Most, of, most people on the planet have learned to be negative, critical, and yes, fearful. But we are free and we can turn this around right now with this class today. Every power is available in the moment. Don't wait tomorrow. It can be done now. Tomorrow, may, it's never too late to turn the day around. Never, never too late. If you're caught up in worry, judgment, and anger, and any negative thoughts, I assure you, you can change that thought now. And if you let it, it can only get worse. You often hear Dr. Greg say that we are guidance at the gate. The guidance to our thoughts. We gather our thoughts. Of course, everything again boils down that this teaching makes us stay positive because we know the positive will always give us um, the good outcome that we all want.
And there are things, uh, some affirmations that we often say, which is common. Uh, I use affirmations of peace, or I might say I'm supplied and supported. And again, when we say this, it doesn't mean that we are in denial or ignoring the problem or pretending that everything is okay. Instead, it means I am knowing there are solutions. And the work is to find the solution. I intend to know that there are answers and solutions. And if I keep focusing on what's wrong and what's missing, my problems will grow. And we, we, we don't intend to nurture the problems. So we become mindful, we take a pause and go within for solutions and ideas. We have inner guidance always. So the question again is, how are you approaching challenges and opportunities? They come every day, the challenges, the opportunities, they are presented every day. Are we approaching it from an informed understanding of who we are or from the chicken little mindset where you think the sky is falling? What mindset, what perspective are we viewing life, the challenges, the opportunities that are presented to us constantly? If we know and see it that everything is an opportunity for us to grow and for us to evolve, then that is the right mindset. That's the mindset we want to nurture. If we see that it's an opportunity to learn, that's the mindset we want to um, nurture. If we see that when these challenges occur, that we have the power within us to change it, that is also the mindset we want to nurture. We also, also want to nurture the fact that the universe constantly has our back. He never sleeps, he never slumbers. It has our back always. It responds to your thoughts, it responds to mine. So everything we are talking about is for us to have the mindset, the right mindset to present to the universe because it will respond to it. And if there are negative mindsets, it will respond. And through this teaching, we know we can change those mindsets and present something positive for the universe to respond to. And again, I'll say, look in. Um, another way of um, seeing this is that if we constantly, always look for the tiniest reason to be grateful. That's a very, another good way of seeing things from mindset that is positive. When we see one reason to be grateful, it will lead to two, it will lead to more, and we see reasons to be positive and be creative from that viewpoint of gratitude. I'm going to um, quickly talk about um, two important stories um, that will bring out that it's never too late to change anything. Like I said earlier, the best time to change is now. And we know that we have the power to change our thoughts. It's a popular one that we all know about um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, one of the most amazing things is the fact that when he reached the age of 65 years and on social security, that was when his passion blossomed, passion for fried chicken. And he created a franchise of over 1,000 restaurants. At 65, so many have retired and given up. But his life barely started at 65. What you're passionate about? 
start today. Do it now. It's never too late to change anything. It's never too late to turn your back off anything that's been holding you down. That is the power you have. That is the power I have. It can happen now. Believe it, dream it, try it, and succeed. Give it your best shot. You will eventually succeed. I'll talk about another second story. It's about a professor that in a classroom and announced a surprise test. And the professor, um, the students were marveled and they distributed question paper. And he faced, of course, he faced, no, he faced the question paper upside down. And, and when the students opened it, nothing was on the question paper, just a clear paper and a black dot. And he said that he, he, professor told the students to write a few lines about what they see on the paper. After the test, the professor started reading the answers. Listen carefully. Everyone wrote about the black dots, mentioning its size, its position, measured all the diameters, and put it there all. And the professor said, I just wanted you all to ponder on something. No one wrote about the white paper, the white part of the paper. Everybody wrote about the black, tiny dot. And that is how we see life. We all have a white paper to observe and learn from. Yet we always focus on the dark spots. We focus on what is wrong and what is missing. Meanwhile, we have so many reasons to celebrate. A people we love, so many things. So many things to be grateful for. But we know what? We limit our horizon by focusing on the dark spots. We give energy to the negative things. We nurture the negative things, the very tiny things. We blow it up in our mind. We feed it. And when we take our eyes away from the black dots of our, of our life and try to focus on the brighter side, you know what? Positivity, demonstrations, great outcomes will be birth, birthed. So everything I've been talking about, it's for us to change our perception. And our perception is as a result of our predominant thought. Who we are is a result of what we feed ourselves daily, hourly, it becomes our subconscious mind is filled with that, and we act from that position. And to change our mentality or consciousness, we must strive to change our habitual thinking. We are always wanting to be the guardian at the gate. James Allen said, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will tomorrow where your thoughts take you. So again, we started with what are you approaching the ocean of life with? From which side of the divide? We know that we have everything that we need and our thoughts are powerful. And our predominant thoughts eventually becomes the basis on which we act. So thoughts are powerful, very powerful. Um, so I would end the lesson here and for our discussion today, we want to 
know what we are predominantly thinking. And like I said, we have this power and we can nip those negative thoughts in the board and change the thoughts. Are your thoughts up or down 